Advance on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. Surviving in Advance is brought to you by BetDSI. Make sure you check out BetDSI.eu by going to their website, putting in a promo code TGT for a 100% cash back bonus up to your first $1,000 deposit. Or you can go to TheGruelingTruth.com, click on the BetDSI banner at the top of the page to get the same advantage. Make sure you use promo code TGTT. Or TGT. Just TGT. All right. I am your co-host for Survive in Advance, my good pastor. Right now, I'd like a welcome to the show, my co-host, Steve Risley. How you doing, Steve? I've had a great night. I mean, what fun stuff to talk about today. Uh, we, I, we got some silly season going on. We've got a lot of malarkey, and but it's what makes malarkey. sports so great. Malarkey, yeah, malarkey. You have to, watch the Andy That's a 60, show you have to be 60 ago. to use the word malarkey, yeah. Now, it's, actually, it's, you it's just have to be, term. you know, partially mentally insane to use that word, but all right. <laughs> uh, we, we had some weird crap happen in sports the last couple of 24 hours or whatever. I don't know. It all happened pretty much last night. Well, no, um, not, not the first thing we're talking about, which happened in the Golden State Warrior Toronto Raptor game, and now yeah. we've got part owner what's his name mark stevens nobody knew his name mark stevens has, yeah has been suspended. good looking guy i mean you know 2.4 billion dollars in he's his been, pocket well that makes him good looking but he's been banned from the nba for a year and fined five hundred thousand dollars for basically shoving the raptors kyle lowry as he went out of bounds um lowry also said that mm-hmm. stevens used vulgar language during the run-in um I don't know. Is it fair to ban him for a year and five hundred thousand dollars? Are they overreacting or are they underreacting? And should he be banned for life? You know, I went at this with our good friend Lucas last night, and I, I tried to take a position in defense of Stevens and say, okay, let's not overbook this thing. But after watching it incessantly on Sports Center, on Today's Show this morning, on on the video, on CBS Sports, on ESPN Sports. I don't. I don't think in this day and age you cannot accept the punishment that goes with what he did. I. I don't. I just think it's just the way things are today. Um, so do you disagree had no with the way things are today? No, I just think that it's the way things are today. I think that it, it probably in the fifties he'd have gotten away with that, and uh, I mean, and, well, in the fifties he'd have got away with it because it probably wouldn't have been on film because the game probably would have been on TV. Exactly right, and incessantly replayed on every venue of social media, sports media. It, it was uncalled for. Uh, an, an owner should not be doing that. Um, he should be respecting all players, respect the game, respect the league. It was a stupid move. I don't. What concerns me is the rush to judgment. Is the Man, this thing's not 24 years, 24 hours old yet, and we've con- tried jury, convicted him, and everything. I just would like to see just a little more due process, but I, th- I think the outcome is going to be the same. Due process. So I don't think what kind of due process really do you need? We just saw what happened. Yeah, I know. You're exactly right. What kind of due process do you need? Right. It's all there on screen. It's there. Uh, he definitely, you know, the girl got up. She moved away. He jumped into the stands. He physically pushed him, uh, which is wrong. Uh, it was, st- and he's apologized for it immensely. He admitted he, he's taken accountability and ownership of his actions. And, but the process of forcing him to sell his share in the team and not being allowed back. I, you know, I think owners should be sitting up in suites, they sit up there in the suites like the owners of the uh, Bruins did when he threw a cup, when the hockey player, which we'll talk about later on, Got undercut. Uh, you know, you know more about that because you know more about hockey than I do. But we'll get to that discussion because it's the same thing. He's up there throwing cups left and right, acting like a fool, too. It's not the uh, same thing. He just did it in he a abused suite. the cup. He yeah, abused the cup, yeah, exactly, versus a, versus a player. So I, I think in this day and age, dude, you, you know, you better understand there's a camera on you all 24 minutes of your, 24 hours of your life. So I don't really understand what your take is here. Is it that the punishment is too much, the punishment isn't enough, that there shouldn't be a punishment, but since it's 2019 and not 1985, I, I don't get where you're going with this because you're kind of all over the place on me. 
Well, I think that, yeah, I know, and I am. And I'm, I'm all over the place with it because, like I said, I, I got had it out with Lucas last night uh, about this thing. And Lucas is, yeah, no, it, the, the punishment fits the crime. It's fine. I, 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 I have don't to live think with it that does. in this day and age. I don't think the punishment fits the okay, crime. Okay, all right. Well, I think in this day and age it does. I, don't. I, I think in real life it's a little exorbitant. Why is it but, exorbitant? I think to tell him he's banned from going to any of the games, he's an owner, of the, uh, and it was just a push with the shoulder off. It wasn't like they got him fisticuffs. Uh, I don't know him. what was said. See, he shoved him, and now we're talking about he was you know, derogatorily attacked verbally. So I did not hear that until this morning, so I, I heard the that The player part was of it, attacked so. verbally by the owner, correct? Right, exactly, yes. So I'm saying – for the NBA to come out and the Warriors to come out and say he's banned six hours after the event occurred, I would rather they said, let's give it 48 hours, let's give the 24-hour rule, let's all look at this and say, what happened? And then I think the outcome still is going to be the same, is what I think. Okay, I don't see why you'd have to wait, because if this was a fan, he'd have been removed immediately. Okay, fair. Yeah. He'd have been removed fair. immediately. Yeah. So you're going to, just because the guy's a part owner... We're only going to remove him for a year. Yeah. That's bullshit. And I, I mean, yeah, we I saw agree with a there, player yes, yes, get banned yes. from the Cubs for making what was supposed to be a gang sign, but it wasn't. And yeah. Yeah, no, I, I just right. don't That's see this. He should be removed forever. He should never be allowed to step okay. foot in another NBA arena because what you had here is he could have changed this entire series. What if mm-hmm. Kyle Lowry would have responded and then maybe – I don't know. Maybe Kawhi yeah. Leonard runs over and gets into it too, and all of a sudden you got a couple <laughs> players suspended. I mean, I watched and, the documentary. I watched the documentary on Ron Artest last night, and we all know about Ron Artest. Yeah, he's and a Showtime scumbag. did a fabulous. Yeah, well, yeah, he, he basically's a, yeah. But does he have disease? Does he have you know? Does he have problems in his life? I don't oh, know. Does he? But That's so sad that he has problems in his life. Who doesn't? It doesn't mean you have to act like a dumbass. I agree. I'm saying it just it, you see the outcome of what it did to Ron Artest's life by jumping in the stands in Detroit. I don't care what it did to his life because that's on him. Right. Agreed. I, I, I think the punishment fits the crime. Yes, it does. I don't. I, 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 I think it needed to be more stronger. than banned for okay. a year. And five hundred. Right. He should be forced to sell his team. He should get well, off the sidelines. He should never be allowed there again. He is an owner. And this is the mm-hmm. thing. You cannot allow a player to touch a fan. You cannot allow a fan to touch a player. I don't care if he's a fan or the owner here because, number one, when you sit – that would be like me getting mad if I'm sitting at a baseball game and I'm sitting in the right field stands, like the first row of the red seats, and I'm not paying attention. And somebody hits a home run and it hits me in the head. That's my fault uh-huh. because on the ticket it says balls and objects can fly into the stands and you are taking responsibility for that. So this okay, player is flying I, can, into can the I, stands. Can I play this devil's is... advocate? Can I just play devil's advocate here for a sure. second? Sure. And, and, and it's only to, to get more genius out of you. Um, we have pushed this thing to where we now sell seats in between the scores table and the coaching and the team. We have – Five. Every NBA team has five to eight seats that sit right next to the coaches. We put the opposite side of the sideline a foot off the court. Now, the game is a physical game. It's a game where people jump in the stands. They die for loose balls. They do everything. People go to these games because they're emotional. Uh, they, they, they get emotionally involved in their teams. Lucas is incredibly emotionally involved in Toronto. I would be too if the Pacers were playing. You would be too if the, if the Bengals were playing or, or, you know, any team that you've coached in your life, you'd be emotionally charged. So, but we've moved everything so close to the action. Have we allowed the fans and created an opportunity to let the fans be part of the action? And now this is no. what the result they're is. They're not of, in of bounds. Saying, they're out of bounds. And you pay for the right to but sit there. Foot, uh, their feet so are sitting they on, always the, have on been. inbounds line. They always I'm have like, been. I'm Jack Nicholson sat like a couple feet from Pat Riley. What the hell is the difference? Diane Cannon did too. 
I mean, that's bullshit. No, they never the sat. Old, they never sat yeah, in that did. space next. To, that okay, space. I don't know. They that never for sat fact. in the space. They sat like four seats down. There was no space there like that because they didn't have the thing right. across there. But right. what I'm saying is I this: agree. this is just an excuse. It's a bullshit okay, excuse fine, because fair, this is the fine. thing. There were 82 games played by every team in the NBA. All right. Over mm-hmm. the last five years, there's been thousands of games played. And there's been two or three incidents. Now, if this happened all the time, I'd say you move them back. But instead, what we got is we've got a half-liquored-up owner who is getting his ass kicked by the Toronto Raptors, and he's pissed off, and he reaches up out of frustration, and he shoves the dude. I'm saying this. As a part owner of a team or as a fan of a team, you have to have enough common sense to know right from wrong. And the problem is today we live in a society where you don't have to know right from wrong as long as you have an excuse. And the excuse now is, well, we sit too close to the game. That's horseshit. You know, I, I don't care. Uh, Mike, if you're it, was, it wasn't an excuse. Court. It was a question. It's an it excuse. Wasn't an excuse. It's a, no, it's an it, excuse it's because you're using okay, it that way. Back, because hang when on, you, hang on, sport. Let's, you, let's go back Don't to call Greg. me sport because my name's not sport. I don't want All to right, be Mike. condescended to, especially I'm, when I'm somebody sorry. made the argument last night from what you said. Big time about, you know, defending this guy, which is what you said you did. I, I, I tried to be open-minded about it. I tried to give it a 24-hour rule and say, let me just watch this for a few times. And then after watching it a few times, I'm like, nah, he's wrong here. But, okay, Drake, Drake. Let's talk about Drake now. Giving back rubs to the coach during a game. Uh, let's talk about uh, Yeah, and that's Lee. wrong. Giving the choke sign to Reggie Miller and, and, the, and the Pacers. I He's mean, fan. where do you draw? The, where, where do you say fan involvement needs to be one thing, and player protection needs to be? Uh, I, there are examples of Spike Lee sits there and just taunts Reggie out his ass. Reggie year. was taunting Spike too. And the and thing they is, were this taunting each other, right? I, I've been to a bunch of games. And the NBA has warned Toronto about. Drake, it says, yeah. hey, you know, calm him down. Get him off there. Don't. We don't need this stuff because this is what's going to incite an idiot owner to do an idiot thing to now I, we're I don't talking think about it is this because rather than I don't a great think, basketball game. I don't think Drake okay. massaged his own coach's shoulders. Now, number one, I think Drake. Do you think, think Drake, that's appropriate? Do you I, think that's appropriate? I don't think it's appropriate You're for any coach? man to massage another man's Would shoulders. Would you want a River Monster a... fan massaging your back while you're trying to coach a game? Oh, yeah, because I got all kind of back problems. It would have been great if somebody would have reached <laughs> over and done that. Um, but this is what I, my takeaway is this. Drake should not be allowed to do that. But once again, when you have to defend right. the actions of one, by pointing out the actions of the other, that tells me right there inherently you're wrong. And when we do that, I Mike, mean, Drake I'm just debating didn't... you. I agree How about with this? You. This is I, the he... thing. If Drake would have shoved Steph Curry, I think Drake's ass would have been removed, and probably wasn't he jawing with a couple of the Warriors players? I mean, did not not? And they all said, "Oh yeah, he's just a great guy. We love him. He's yeah. Drake. He's got well, a big." Well, and you know what? He's a this record is the producer. Thing. But he was jawing. Should a fan be allowed to jaw with a player after the game? Yeah, it's Should according to what you say. It's, it's according okay to what you're jaw. saying. It's according to what you're saying. Tell me what he's saying. Okay. All right. If you're I calling somebody I, I, names, I mean, you know. then I, mean, I don't see the problem with trash talking. The problem is this. There's a difference between trash talking and going over the line and Agreed. touching somebody. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed entirely. Now, if Mike, somebody agree. is screaming there out. Was the, there was the clip showing. One, was it Durant or who was it that a young kid was trash talking to Durant? Durant stopped and went and talked to the kid and the dad. Yeah, and I, I think it was Durant, and maybe I, I don't. It was it was a high profile NBA player. I just had so much thrown at me in the last twenty four hours that. But they, they they talked about the fact that young six year old boy, seven year old boy was sitting in the front row. He was smack talking. And the, the the NBA player, I believe it was Durant, and somebody's going to correct me on this. Somebody please tweet in if I'm missing the boat here on the player. But he went over and said, hey, this is why you shouldn't do this. And he talked to the kid and the dad, and they shook hands, and the, the, the story had a happy ending. They, they went on to become, you know, understanding each other. This, this is a bad – this is a black eye. It's a black eye. It, it, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a bad call for the owner. Um I think he gets his punishment, and, you know, that's it. 
in this day and age, that's it. Well, in any day and age, you should not be able to shove a player who did nothing Agreed. to deserve to be shoved. Do you see a reason Agreed. why? I mean, if you're standing there at the game and he runs over in front of you and runs into your son, your wife, your cousin, whoever's sitting next to you, are you going to shove him? No, I'm just telling you the way the way the game's becoming and we're moving fans closer to the court and we're doing things, you better have contingency plans in place. Well, uh, I still think courtside seats are as far away from the court as they ever were. Yeah, I yeah, I I I, I yeah, I can't dispute that call either, but money is easier to come by in this day and age. You got a guy who's a tech genius billionaire well i'll tell you, you what know, i think the, the economy win. in the 80s was much better than it is today and there's a lot there was a lot more people with disposable well, incomes it, it, back then than there is today but and also i tried to buy lakers tickets to a game and you can't get in without four four figures uh, to, to get a lakers game yeah that's you because get a clippers game for nothing how many people yeah, live but, in la no, I understand that, but that that's, okay. it's relative because There's every economy 20,000 tickets too. out of five, six, seven million people. I mean, right, it's not that right, hard to right. buy. But it's still, it, it's the economy of where you live and what you do and, and what goes on. So I, I know, I, I might, I'm with you. I, he, gets a due, he gets a due process. He's punished. All right. If and a player, if, if the player would have read into you. No, you have, you have to protect done? the player. Number one, you got to protect. But the if he runs into you, if you're sitting there watching the game, you're a few beers in, and this dude runs into you. What if he hurts you? What are you going to do? Are you going to respond? Yeah. No, I'm going to pat him on the ass and say, "Go play." But I'm a player. I mean, I'm somebody who fights the fight. You're a player. You're somebody who's fought. I'll the tell fight. you what. I've never. There's fought, a lot of fans you know what, out there. I, I draw the line at this, Steve. Played. I draw the line at patting another grown man on the ass because I think there's something inherently wrong with that in sports. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm serious. I have never touched right. another okay. man's okay. ass at any point well, in my patting life. patting on the ass is a phrase for like patting him on the back. No, because you know um, what? Uh, 1981 national championship game. You patted Randy Whitman on the ass at least twice that I saw, and I've been going to ask you about it, but I keep forgetting. I got invited to Randy Whitman's wedding. <laughs> I figured Kathy. you did. Did you get invited to a honeymoon? <laughs> Were you the bride? Honeymoon? No, I didn't get invited. Hey, good call. Good call. Were you the bride, no, Steve? No, I, I, I would have said, hey, get back in the fight. Go push him. I'd have pushed him back on the court and said, go, go, well, get after him. Yeah. Okay. But I love the game. I don't necessarily have a fan favorite here, but I understand Lucas's point. I understand. You know, the right call was made. He's punished. I don't think it was. I, I, I think he it. should have been punished. Yeah, I think it was too. Yeah. No. You think what? I was? didn't want you, to believe that last so night. So do you think that the punishment is correct or do you think that the punishment is not correct? Because you just said they're both right. I think that it needs to, the punishment is correct. It needs to stop right there. I don't think he should give up ownership of his team. I think there should be other provisions made. But if any other that, player uh, touches. Or if any other fan touches a player, he'll be banned forever. Well, but no, the, the players showed no aggression at all. He was going, he was playing the game. He he can't put the ball on the player. He showed no aggression. I know. He didn't do anything. He just so, in the stands for a ball. This is the, the, the thing. The, the fan wait a second, the though. Owner, if a fan touches a player like that, he's going to be ejected and never allowed to come back to another game. Well, I think you have to look at it individually. I, I think no, that you in can't. A case where when fans, you look at it individually, no, is when fans believe yeah. they can get away with things. I so think that a fan, I think that a player diving into the front row of a seat and knocking a beer over and diving for a loose ball and getting up and everybody's laughing and chuckling and you get back into the course of play, I think that's acceptable. I think that's that's the nature of the beast of what the yeah, NBA but what I'm to saying is that's not what happened the experience because a fan no, it shoved him, and a fan would never be allowed to come to another game if that happened. I mean, we had a fan that said a racial uh -huh. epitaph in Utah, and he was revoked forever. He can't go to games ever again. But since now we've got. A rich owner worth two point four billion dollars. We're going to find him five hundred grand, which is like finding me or you Nothing. seventy five right, right. cents, and then we're going to let him come back after a year. But Joe Blow fan 
who spends his hard-earned money. He's not making $2 billion off owning the Warriors and other stuff. Maybe he's making mm-hmm. sixty grand and he's putting his money in or hundred and sixty grand. If he makes a mistake, though, he's done forever. That's not right. That's inherently wrong. I think, uh, Mike, you're, Mike, you're exactly right. There's responsibility with ownership. Yeah, and he did not show responsibility. Last no, night. I'm not so saying there's a responsibility the with ownership. I'm saying the responsibility is this. When you sit in the same seat as a fan, you should be held to the same standard as that fan. And if they're letting him he come was, back after a year, he's not being held to the same standard as a regular fan. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying just review the process. Give it 24 hours and then look Why? at it. You saw they, what if happened. They come out, if they, that's like saying, "Hey, somebody well, just let's get shot both sides of the story my dog because, like in I the said, front I yard." But I want to wait twenty-four hours. I watched it last night with Lucas, and I heard and Lucas got on, and he was vehemently defending Toronto. I, I'm like, eh, "I don't know if this is that big of a deal," but then you started watching it over, and then you started looking and listening to all the things that were transpiring within hours and minutes after it occurred. I mean, guys, I would probably just kind of give this some process. And then make your decision. And I don't think the decision would have been any different. I'm just saying give it some process. And let's look at, is this a, I mean, what's this guy's history of being sitting on the sidelines? Should owners be sitting on the sidelines? Should owners go on their streets? Actually, to tell you the truth, Steve, if I pay for the team, I can sit wherever I want. I'll sit on the end of the bench or sure. I'll have and Steve Kerr sit on my lap. Too, because I look at Mark Cuban, I look at Mark Cuban, and there's probably no bigger fan of sports in basketball in the world, and Mark Cuban, he sits in a T-shirt and jeans on the end zone in, in the front row, and he does, doesn't want to be anywhere else because so he's a fan this, of the game. So this is not a big deal, which is what no. you just said, right? No, I, no, I did not say that. It is a huge deal. And okay. I agree with the decision rendered down. I'm fine with it now. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, he, I'm not his, because his, fans would be treated worse. Well, I think that, like you said, five hundred thousand dollars means less to him than it means to most anybody in the world, except for Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and and uh, the guy that owns Bezos, the guy that owns Amazon, uh, those and and his ex-wife, who's now the wealthiest woman in the world. Um, I, I no, I think that it, it, the money's not the issue. I think the punishment is. It sets a tone. It sets a message. I think the players need to be protected. I think, but I think we've creeped in on their space. We've got fans sitting next to coaches, mm. fans sitting and almost versus getting back rubs during timeouts. Seriously, really? I don't care if you're Drake or if it's me or you. You should not have a fan touching a coach during a timeout of a basketball game. That's as wrong as anything, and it's contact. So, but that's the nature of the, the fan experience of bringing it back into the NBA. So this is the, what you get out of it. And yeah, he's banned. Good. That's the price. Now we set a, a precedent. Now we set a limit and we have, a, we have a rule of tolerance. Good for them. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I just don't see how you think that fans sit closer now than they ever did before. No, maybe maybe I don't. Maybe they interact more, Mike. Maybe they don't sit closer. They interact more. Well, I like I said, I don't recall Jack, Jack Nicholson, Nicholson getting up. I don't recall Jack Nicholson getting up and giving Pat Riley back rubs. I don't recall Diane Cannon getting up and giving, you know, Kurt Rambis shoulder massages. I don't recall any of that ever happening. I recall I see it happen daily now. Or routinely. Daily? Routinely? No, routinely? I've seen Drake do that routinely. once. I don't think Drake, and I think this. And I, I would think if Lucas is out there, Lucas would agree that Drake is probably way out of bounds. At least I would hope he would, because allowing stuff like that yeah. to happen so, is what causes stuff like this to happen. Right, exactly. My point, exactly. And, but we allow Drake to do it, and that allows a stupid owner to do it. Yeah. You, you know, M- NBA, this is a perfect storm. NBA kind of brought this on themselves that for reasons. The owner did a very stupid thing. You've got to protect the players, but you're going to allow fans that kind of access. Right. So, you it's know, on happen. Twitter, 
if you go to the grueling truth, you can see a Twitter picture of Jack Nicholson sitting right behind Byron Scott when Byron Scott was the head coach of the Lakers. And that was a few years back. And it's the way it happens. And I will say this. Lucas sent a message. And, Lucas, we can tag mm-hmm. you in on this if you're not busy. But Lucas said, trash talking and shoving someone is different. My point is this, Lucas. You cannot have it both ways because Drake should have to sit in his seat. He could stand up. I agree. He should not be able yeah. to walk down behind the coach. That's uncalled yeah. for, and it's wrong. And if it's wrong for one side, it's wrong for the other. That's all I'm mm-hmm. saying here, Lucas. I mean, the thing is, Drake should have to sit his ass down or stand at his seat because this is the thing. Um, the guy in the second row behind Drake, if he would have walked out and stood up behind Nick Nurse and started massaging his shoulders, he'd have been beaten half to death by security. <laughs> by, by five huge security guards that would have just pummeled the guy to death and drug him out and thrown him in handcuffs and he'd be taken away to some Canadian jail. And A God Canadian knows jail? Hear from why, why do you say it like that? <laughs> I don't know. Are there jails in Canada? I don't even. But, but I am nice really place. disappointed that even... your initial reaction was that there was nothing wrong with this. No, I I wanted to get. I know. I just needed to look at it from an open mind and say, God, is this the heat of the moment thing? Is this a a, a, a drunk owner sitting there in his privy seats and just kind of getting involved? Because it was a it was a push on the shoulder. It wasn't like he threw a punch at the guy. But that doesn't make it right, okay? So don't jump on me for that. I'm just saying it was kind of like I could have taken it like, hey, get your ass back out there. Go play. And But it's not how it was taken. Oh, so yeah, I that's had to the look way at I it took that it. Way. I took and it that he Lucas was mad and, I went and at get it your last ass night. out of here. Right, and Lucas and I went at it last night, and I, I bought into Lucas's theory. I, I watched the tapes. I so basically, the guy you just want to admit right now was that Lucas was right and you were wrong last night, and you would like to right. apologize yeah. to Lucas for ever questioning. I apologize to Lucas. Yeah, no problem. All right. No Next problem up, at all. we have the Boston Bruins. Uh, real quick, who wins game four tonight? We've got Clay Thompson playing, Kevin Durant not. Do you like the Raptors or do you like the Warriors tonight, Steve? Can you bet against the Warriors tonight? Huh? I can't bet against the Warriors tonight. I'm I not did. sure they're going to win the I series. I bet a significant amount against the Warriors tonight. The Raptors are okay. going to win tonight, and then the Raptors will well, close it out in game five. All righty. No, I, I disagree. I think mm. that uh, Clay Thompson, I mean, you know, it sounded like he was pissed that he didn't get to play last game. He wants to play. I think Durant's checked out. I think Durant has no interest in playing basketball for the Warriors again. Uh, he really? Life. That's nuts. Yeah. I'm, uh, that's crazy. Why would you say that about somebody who's always played his ass off, who's won them championships, who's one of the best players in the NBA? Mike, we're talking about a hockey player who played hockey last night with a broken jaw. Oh, my God. Really? What's that he mean? He can't talk. Yeah. It, but he can play hockey. So Wait we, a second. We have a What's Kevin Durant's muscle? injury? He has a strange calf muscle. Okay. I guarantee you this. The guy last night who played hockey with a broken jaw, if his stra- calf muscle was strained, would not have been playing because you kind of need your calves to skate. You kind of need your calves to play basketball. Your jaw being broken, I-, I would make this case that I've seen players play basketball. I've seen boxers box with broken jaws. I've never seen a boxer box with a broken leg. I mean, a calf muscle that's torn makes it, or torn, or whatever was wrong with it, makes it impossible to play. You can't play like that. I saw, Steve. I, I saw, I saw gymnasts do rings and do vaults with broken legs and win gold medals. So don't <laughs> talk to me about that. You're talking about a gymnast who ran on a vault. She ran for three seconds. She landed once. In a basketball game, Steve, I don't know if you know this or not, but you play for 48 minutes and you run and jump on that calf. Uh, I also, Jack Youngblood played a Super Mike, Bowl. Mike, I'm just saying. Carrie Strug's broken bone was a non-weight-bearing yeah. bone. She could stand up, and it's a gymnastic. It was event. a winner-take-nothing moment, and yeah. she went for it and nailed it. Kevin Durant has decided to sit out for 10 games now uh, because he has a strained calf muscle. I don't think Seriously? there's any way he should be playing at and all. And the NBA Finals, uh, this is this is 
This is dynasty moments. This is oh, life altering moments. Really? This is Tom Brady moments. I think they're already. And a dynasty. you're going to tell me that you can't play because you have a strained calf muscle? I say, it up, yeah. You ever had a play. strained calf muscle? Yes, I have. No, you haven't. Okay. Well, thank you, Doctor. When did you have a strained calf muscle? Okay. When did you play, and how successful were you? Uh, I've never been successful at playing. Period. Uh, I've had strained calf muscles often. They come and go. They happen, and you kind of either decide you can go they or you come can and say, go. Yeah, you I think heat, his was you take, worse. Um, Did they ultrasound, strain? The, you rub was... it, you 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 numb it, and you go play. If it's the NBA Finals and your team is fighting for the NBA championship, you show up and play. So if you Playing can't run, you play it. Anyway. That process. is the most asinine thing I've ever heard, and to come from somebody that actually played, that's real scary. That you're going to question Kevin Durant. And compare you playing at IU. Number one, Kevin Durant runs. No, I he did jumps not really do that. high and he has Jeez to land. Christ, you make accusations. I didn't make any union. accusations. You're making the accusations on Kevin Durant, Steve. You're basically I'm saying not. he's I'm a just coward. Saying, I would You're say, saying he's a coward. I would think that if I, if I was Kevin Durant and I was wanting to win another championship, I would find a way to show up and play. Um, but. Again, I'm not his doctor. I'm not in the locker room. I don't know what the, the you, series you of injury is. You do know Tom Brady missed an entire season one time, and his team didn't make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Is he a coward, too? Because he didn't play. Does that mean he wanted out of New England? I, I never called Kevin Durant Yeah, you do. Because well, I'll tell you this. If you question uh, whether somebody should could play or not, you're calling them a coward because there's nothing else you can no, be. Not. Yeah, you just said that he had checked out. He doesn't want anything to do with being a Golden State Warrior anymore. You said that if it was you, you would play. You said that if it was other people, they would play with a strained calf muscle. You don't know what's wrong with his calf. You have no idea. I think the calf muscle, when it happened, if you remember, I said I didn't think he'd play again the rest of the year because a strained calf muscle, if it's bad enough, is extremely serious. I think that is serious. And to think that he has checked out on his teammates, I think is asinine because no matter what you think about Kevin Durant wanting out of Golden State, and we don't know if he does or he doesn't. He probably does because he can make more money in other places. But to think that he is a coward and he is purposely not playing when he could, I think is just wrong. Well, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I, yes. I think he, he, players play, play, play. Great players rise to the occasion. They okay, play. so you're saying he's not a great player. I'm saying great players rise to the occasion so, and find a way. As I Champions said, find a way. As I said, Champions find a said. way. So, yeah. Champions riding find five, a way. Riding on a team that carries you to three or four gold, uh, uh, rings doesn't necessarily make you a champion. Actually, I'm pretty sure that he was the I'm main I'm pretty player sure that Steph year. Curry is the heart and soul of that basketball team, yeah. not Kevin Durant. Okay. Um, and we had this discussion yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I I agree. Steph Curry is he's a guy who'll dive on loose balls so for with Kevin thirty Durant. seconds to go down by twelve. What is Kevin Durant doing right now? He's Kevin oh, Durant's I'm nursing hurt. my calf. I'm nursing my calf. See, you're I'm calling him a sign, coward. I'm getting ready to sign a lucrative a contract with the Knicks and and go. Make All a, I know is this: uh, is when I watch him and Steph Curry together, it looks like he's engaged with his team winning, and it doesn't look like he's checked out. And I mean, hell. Does that mean that Willis Reed was a coward because he'd stopped playing after five minutes of game seven? Uh, he played the first four minutes, obviously. Yeah, he played the first, first minutes, four so minutes, he, and then he checked out. He didn't play. Steve Risley would have played in that situation because it was game seven of the NBA no, Finals. No, I, I don't know what the seriousness of his injury was. Oh, but, but you and know the seriousness Lucas, of Kevin Durant. Lucas has injury. reminded me that Kevin Durant has won two MVP championships, so – Kevin Durant is a great player. No, he's not. Uh, he's a coward from what you said. You said that he is checked out. No. Oh. That's what you said. Yeah, we, we talked about that. Um, um, no, I, I'm just saying – I'm just saying I think that athletes rise to the occasion. They go through it. But, I, I you know, it is what it is. So – all right. Any, <laughs> anytime somebody I, 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 I would, I would, I, if is. I was, if I was Kevin Durant and I had the money he has, uh, I would want to play. But that's that's my mentality, not his mentality. 
I'm not the caliber of player he is. I'm not anywhere near. I never got even an eyelash close to being the kind of player he is. Well, I'll I just tell say you I I would want to be on That's the court. Sad. Like I think Clay Thompson. I thought you just said if you were court. making that I much think, money, you wouldn't care. No, I said if if my life was set in the sense that his life is set, and if I have to say, you know what, this may be my last time ever to play for a national championship, uh, an NBA championship, because he's probably not going to do it in the next time frame. They're not going to yeah, win he shit. He will. Uh, I, well, the, yeah, and we can debate that in the, in the next year. And maybe you're right there, too. Uh, but I'm saying, dude, this, this is your last opportunity. That's why I think Tom Brady – Days, he's like, this may be the last time I ever get to play for a Super Bowl. And he keeps going. because I, I, I don't think I that Tom going, Brady keep ever going. thinks that. That's what makes Tom Brady special. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think Tom, Tom Brady, Brady thinks, thinks about, he's going to he win Super think about Bowl losing. five years from now. Right, yeah. He doesn't think about losing. Right. I, All I, mean, right. I don't know. Let's switch. But this wasn't about Kevin Durant. I mean, it's. Yeah, it was. You made it about Kevin Golden Durant State's when gonna, you I said that he was a coward. I did not say he was a you coward. You did. You questioned his courage. I did That's not. calling him a coward. You said that if no. it was you or if it was Tom Brady, they would play. You said that a nine-year-old gymnast could do stuff that he couldn't do with a broken leg. That's what you said. I mean, it was pretty clear to hear. I, heard I think it. she I took off on that run, on that vault, knowing what it was going to feel like to land. Yeah. And you know and what? I bet this. I bet if you told Kevin Durant. The Americans were going to win a gold medal. I bet if you told Kevin Durant, you could go on the court. Aside. Just she put talking. all the pain aside, Aww. put everything aside, and said, She's a gym. This is, this is the moment. Jeez. This is what you're defined for. Yeah, one moment. So I guarantee you this. Yeah. If Kevin Durant could go on the court for one drive down the court, He'd go in and he'd dunk yeah. the ball to win it all because he wouldn't have to do anything else if he was a freaking nine-year-old gymnast. All right, so let me ask you this, and I don't know the answer to this, so I'm going to get lambasted for this too. In 70, Will Reed and the Knicks, did they win that year or did they beat the Lakers? Yeah. So he played five minutes. He got out there emotionally, played on a, on a busted knee, played five minutes, said, I'm done. But yeah. emotionally, spiritually, he yeah. said, I'm a warrior. I'm going to go play. Actually, he didn't say that. I'm going to fire Dave out of Stockton, game. Dave DeBusher, uh, Bill Bradley, Clyde Frazier. I'm going to fire my teammates, Phil Jackson. I'm going to fire all those guys to go play because I'm going to give it all I can for five minutes. But That's then he the tapped one out. Ball, Mike. If Kevin That's Durant came out for he five out minutes right. and played. Kevin, Duvall, Kevin Durant quit before it ever got capped out. There you go. You're calling him a coward again. So that is official. You can uh, I'll call him a coward. Fine. Okay. Yeah, because you day. are. And he's it's a coward. Absolutely no stupid. Problem. Okay. Absolutely. Fine. I'll call stupid. him a coward then. Well, you did. That's how you define you coward. Just, you doubled he, it down. He, you said that you playing. didn't call him that. The team and then right him after right that, now. you said that if he, he was, that if that was coming to the inject the cortisone in it and go play. Yeah, because that's a smart thing to do. Okay. Okay. See, this is the thing. All right? Th- this is my proof. Yeah. You think Willis Reed only played five minutes in game seven. No, that's what she told me. I'm not looking it up. I'm not Googling it. So I'm not I'm Googling not it, it either. Up. Did he play only five minutes I'm not, or did he play more? I don't know how much time he played. I remember him playing more than five minutes, but I remember him hobbling up down the court could barely you walk. You remember him playing more than um, five minutes? I Well, I, I don't. I, Mike, I was the 1970. I was all of 10, 12 years old at that point in time. I was a year and a half. I really – you what? I was a year and a half old. Okay. But, I yeah, I, I remember – but I watched it live. You watched it on tape. Oh. I watched it, it happen live. I remember West's 60-foot shot to tie the game, which they lost in overtime. I remember that happening live. What year you was don't. that? Uh, I believe that was the same playoffs, wasn't it? Really? It wasn't. It was 1972, but I'm glad you remember it. Now, 72. let me ask you this. Okay, yeah. Let 72. me ask you this. Yeah. All the right. Knicks well, were up three games to two to in schematics. game six. Why, you are? You're the one sitting there accusing me of no. not knowing. You know, I'm I watched the game errors. like two days ago, but all right. Now, when you look at this, though, does that mean Willis Reed was a coward in game six when he didn't play at all because he was hurt? They were up three games to two. They go to the forum with a chance to clinch it, and he didn't play at all. 
Touche. No, he was not a coward. Uh, Willis Reed was a guy that I think that, they, that that everybody in the world said, I think that's it. You you can't play on this leg again. He he, you know. But I again, I was not privy to any of those conversations either. So I don't know what, what went on in the locker room between uh, everybody that was involved in that decision making process. And I don't know what went on with Kevin Durant. Uh, All right, what's going so don't on? Call him I think a, coward, I think it's a, a calf strain. A calf strain. I never called him a coward until you don't know what the injury is. They say it's a calf strain. A calf strain. Right. Can You're mean exactly many right. Different I don't things. know what the injury is. And exactly. I think it is completely asinine it's a to watch calf. Kevin That's Durant's career. I think it's asinine to watch Kevin Durant's career and believe that he is not playing because he doesn't care. I just think that that's a okay. huge stretch. All right, let's go to last night. Well, there are night. players that play for Game money and players five. that play for rings. Tom Brady plays for rings. Oh, Kevin Durant plays boy. for money. Go, really? Go, go have at it. Then how does he have yeah. so many no, rings? Yeah. That's just an He's asshole got, opinion. He not have as many as Brady does. He can't. This is the thing. If Tom Brady played under the same salary cap rules as the NBA, he'd have had to move to another team 10 oh, or 15 now we're years ago salary to get paid, cap. too. So because he's only making $250 million a year, he's a pauper. <laughs> and that's ruining his career. Oh, Jesus, Louise. Get off that argument. You're a fucking moron. He's so you don't think... Wait God. a second. If you have a chance to make $250 million for five years, but the Knicks offer you... You know, six years at four hundred million dollars, you're going to stay at Golden State. Do you know who the number one all-time money earner is in the NBA? Don't you know care. who it is? Don't care. Don't care. Don't care at all. Well, you're just talking about money being more important than no. championships. No. What I'm saying is this: he, wherever he's going to go, he's going to have a chance to win a championship. I mean, he left Oklahoma City and came to Golden State so he could win a championship. It wasn't just money. At Oklahoma City, they obviously couldn't get it done, so he went somewhere where he could. Now he's going to go somewhere where he can get paid, and he can win a championship. Because I guarantee you this, okay. he goes to New York, he's not going to be the only one going there. And the East is not the greatest conference in the world outside of a couple teams. So I, I just think that I don't know what makes you think Kevin Durant doesn't care whether he wins or not. So, so, rather than, so you're saying he's taking the easy route. To win a championship. No. He's I'm gonna go to the East. To oh, you just said it. What you said it. He's gonna get other teammates in who are yeah. gonna help him. Who he's wouldn't? gonna go to the East, which is a weak oh, I get side it. of the So NBA. you're telling me right now then that like Stay Michael, out west, stay in Michael Golden Jordan. State. Keep defending. It's kinda of what we Michael all, Jordan Mike, did. You know you got six rings. Kinda of what Michael Jordan rings. did. You know how hard it is to defend. Kinda of, kinda of like uh, you Michael know Jordan. how hard it is to defend. Kinda of like Michael Jordan. And all right. He's walk you you away could from just it. keep talking and ignore everything I say, and we could just let you do the show by yourself. <laughs> I'm doing or that. Or you could respond. I know you're doing that. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'll I shut mean, up. Why did the Bulls go get Tony Kukoc? He's a great player. Yeah, but wait a second. Does that mean Michael Jordan was? You know, shitty because he wanted great players around him so he could win championships. The people that say that because LeBron went to Miami with Wade and him, LeBron had to. He wasn't going to win anything in Cleveland. You got to have help. Where was Tony Kukoc before he went to the Bulls? You gotta, Where what? was Tony Kukoc at before? I don't know. Where he was, was Kukoc at before he went to he the Bulls? He played for Croatia. He played on the Croatian okay, team in '92 so that played against the Dream Team in the Gold Medal game. We don't think that Jordan made Kukoc a better player. Oh fuck! Here we no. I believe this. I believe Kukoc going to the Bulls stunted his growth. I think Tony Kukoc could have been a star really? in the NBA. But he came to the Bulls and he ended up being the third or fourth guy. He was not a star in the NBA. He was. I remember the name. You remember the name. So do you remember Craig Hodges? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's not a star either. But you remember his name. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. So the thing here to say that you know the Bulls from the time they got. I remember Ronnie Lester. I remember uh, nineteen eighty-five. The Bulls. I remember most of the guys who played for the Bulls. Jesus. In that point in time. Okay. I don't believe Ronnie Bob Lester Love? played. I don't believe Bob Love ever played. No, I played think Ronnie Lester, Ronnie that. Lester, I think, did play for the Bulls. Yeah, I'm but not, not when Michael Jordan was there, Steve, because Ronnie Lester was out of the league by 85. No, Ronnie Lester was, was a he? Laker for a while. But, yeah. yeah. He played at Iowa when I played at IU. So, I, I know, you know, but I thought Ronnie played for the Bulls. Yeah. 
Well, he might have for a little while. Everybody else did because they were trying to find better players. All right, the Bruins last night. <laughs> In a NHL, you definitely lost that debate badly. It was getting a I black eye. I lose every debate to you. What's new? What's new? I, I love debating with you. You're fun. You make me smarter. Oh, I give you that. Oh, all right. No, I'm being complimentary to you. I don't oh. think you're a coward. The Boston Unlike Bruins. Kevin Durant. The Boston Kevin Bruins. Durant. All right, what'd you take out of Bruins St. Louis last night in the tripping? I, uh, you know, I, I wish I knew more about hockey to know if that was a severe call or not. I, I saw a little bit of a flop there. He kind of went down and stayed down. I, I don't know what the stipulation is on tripping. It, it was. He stuck his stick out. It looked like it was intentional, but I also watching it this morning, and I'm watching it right now again. Um. Blown call, black guy for NHL. I thought the guy kind of laid there. And so, to me, it's why I, we had this debate, you and I do, about instant replay and things. I think bad refereeing, good refereeing is all a part of sports. Steve, and it's not Steve, fun. It's not fun. How is it's he acting fun. like anything? Can I finish do, the statement? Wait a second. This is, this is, I can't believe you're saying this. I mean, I'm, a, I'm cheering for the Blues in this series. But the Blues got a great break last night because that was one of the most horrific. Are you going to let me finish or are you just going to talk with all your bullshit about how it looked like you flopped? You never let me finish? No, because you did finish. Because nobody gives a fuck. What you're saying here is just stupid. I mean, he took his stick. He flipped him on his head. He laid there because his head hit off the ice, Steve. This isn't like the NBA where they wear little shorts and guys fall down when nobody touches them and they act like they're hurt. These are actually grown men playing a grown man game, and he got flipped on his head. So, yes, he laid on the ice because he probably got a concussion. I mean, and to sit here and to say that he's faking laying on the ice when you can clearly see his head smack off the ice is kind of absurd. I'm trying to pull this back up right now. Keep talking. I don't. I got nothing else to say. I'm just waiting for you to say you're right. That's how this usually goes. I. I. I, I mean, it's a call. It. It. it, it it's. It's a call. It's, it's a, call. a call. So I'm, I live with the calls. I live with all calls in sports. When the calls are made, you live with the call. Oh yeah. Uh, you you're the one who wanted to debate it this morning. I don't see any debate. I didn't want to they debate call, anything. I call. just debating the fact that you have any doubt whether this was a trip or not, and you're saying that the guy took a dive. No, I did not say that. I said oh. I thought it was a trip. I thought he stuck his puck his stick out. I thought he undercut him. I get that part of hockey. I, and so I you never think said the guy, that the guy took of, a dive? I said I think he, there's a little bit of flopping going on there. He's still on the <laughs> ground a lot. <laughs> That's a joke. Come on, Steve. He hits his head off the ice. He's got a ah, – never mind. Never well, mind. Are you looking at it? Not worth – I'm trying to get it pulled up. Hang on, I got to go back to history here. Jesus Christ! Go ahead, keep talking. Well, I got nothing else to say about it. I'd have thought you'd already saw it, but uh, I've seen it a hundred times. I'm going to watch it one more time. Lucas, Steve, you literally just said he flopped. Yes, okay, yes. I think that there was some laying on the ground, flopping. He hit his as head a, off the ice as, after the incident occurred. L- let me watch it again and see where his. You know what? Is. I'd have loved to have been there because I know you're old enough that you were there at Ford Theater when Lincoln got shot in the head, and I bet that you said, "I don't even think he's that hurt. He just laying there like a big coward." <laughs> Lincoln lived for like 16 hours. I mean, any good brain surgeon could have fixed him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he laid there in a bed for 16 hours and nobody knew what the hell to do with him any 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 brain surgeon any astronaut so have you pulled this up yet probably could do what have you pulled this up yet to look at it to give us your yeah i'm looking at it right now yeah i'm looking at it right now let's go okay Keep talking. I mean, I don't got nothing to say. I'll let the video. How long does it take you to watch a video, Steve? The video is like three seconds. Well, I've got to go through game five highlights. Why do you have to do that? I mean, you could just go pull it up like every other. I'm watching the guy with a broken jaw right now. Who's. Um, yeah, 
I, I think he laid there for a second, and he oh. should. But I, it's a it's a penalty. He should have been called for he a penalty. Laid he should have been called immediately. Second. You're right. You're right. Whether no, what he did after he laid is there for a second. I yeah. So it's immaterial. The, he the laid there for a second, called, Steve, because he hit call. his head off the ice. It's not immaterial. Okay, so here's my question to you, Mike. How much do we continue to just piss on the referees for blowing every sporting event? You know, we're into the Super Bowl now. We're into the Stanley Cup now. We're into all these sports. It just keeps coming back to it's the referee's fault that we didn't win. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm oh, waiting I for thought a you, I thought you were going to ask a question instead of just make a statement. Well, I'm making a statement, so respond to it. I mean, all I hear anymore from everybody, and the next story we're going to get into is a minor league baseball player getting death threats for bunting for a no-hitter uh, and breaking up a no-hitter. Well, that's the next story we're going to talk about if we have time. So are you all right so with bunting definitely... when there's a no-hitter going into the last inning? Well, I, let's finish this one first and then get into it. We already that. finished this one. I mean, the too. fact that you think a man who hit his it, head on the ice no, should jump up I immediately. A I guess he's a called. coward, too. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. No, I don't think – I think it's a bad call. They missed it. It was – from what I know about hockey, it looked like he used his stick to trip the guy and take him out. And it's a call that's routinely made in the sport. And therefore, the fact that it's not made here uh, just says it was a bad call. And leave it at that. Bad calls happen in all sports. Sure Everything. Um, well, they do, Mike. They do, Mike. You, you've had bad calls made against you. Yeah, the they shouldn't happen. You're a six-time champion. They should. You're should one of the not best happen coaches of all time. Should I not mean, happen. And, and, it, it, no, it shouldn't happen, but it does happen. But it doesn't happen. So you to. can deal. All right. Well, I find a way to fix it so it doesn't happen. Well, you got replay. I guess it's you just a replay. It. It's a replay. Right. Yeah. yeah all they right. should have just replayed go, it and, and done let's it. Let's go to the baseball thing. Are you all right with somebody bunting in a ninth inning or seventh inning with a no hitter on the line? Yes, I'm fine with that. Me too. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. I mean, I know you're you breaking up a no hitter. You don't want anybody to throw a no hitter against you. It, was it an individual no hitter or a team no hitter? I couldn't even find it out. He was into the sixth, seventh inning at minor league baseball yeah, game. Yeah, seven yeah. Innings. The Trenton, the Trenton Yard Goats or Steam Cheeseburgers. I don't even know what their name is. They've got a hell of a stadium though. That's they got. They won the award 2018 for best mode stadium. Um, you know, yeah, I'm fine with that. I, yeah, I don't want you pissing on me. So if I can break up your no-hitter and I bunt, I, I get a hit, play the game. There's no participation awards here. You don't get a participation award because you're throwing a no-hitter and I'm not allowed to bunt on you and get a hit and get on base. Screw you. <laughs> That's the nature of sports. But All right. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up? Uh, no. All right. I don't want to yelled at anymore. Well, I don't want to get yelled at anymore. <laughs> All right, guys. We are going to go ahead and wrap the show up. So if bloodlettings go on for more than 55 minutes, the person can lose consciousness and dive. So, or die. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to wrap it up. And that would um, be me. <laughs> and let's see. And tonight. <clears throat> Raptors will win again because we the North. I'm just kidding. But hey, Mike, okay. are you surprised? Are you surprised? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I got dinged all night last night from Lucas. Are you surprised that uh, Nadal beat Federer again on clay at the French mm-hmm. Open? No, they're that on clay. You? Plus, I think lifetime Nadal. Nadal's beat him a lot more than he's lost to him. I think they're like twenty four and fifteen lifetime now. Yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Nadal is the best. Clay player, they, clay court player. This is the thing, though. History the, of the game. The thing that stood out to me is they showed him in semifinals at the uh-huh. French Open. He was like 12-0 lifetime. But the thing that stood yeah. out to me 
is third and fourth on that for most straight their best record undefeated wise in semifinals was Bjorn Borg at six and zero. But the thing that stood out to me was this: Bjorn Borg was six and zero at Wimbledon, and he was six and zero at the French Open. So he was six and zero on grass, and he was six and zero on clay against the best players in the world. And those two surfaces are not alike. So it's great that Nadal did that. But the thing that stood out to me was Bjorn Borg was 6-0 and on grass and 6-0 and on clay. And I think that's right. a huge accomplishment that people don't really bring up that much. And Bjorn Borg was a stud. The only problem was he couldn't play on concrete. I don't think he ever won the U.S. Open. Um, Borg, or not Borg, but John McEnroe, kept beating him in the early 80s in the finals there. But, of course, all but 1981, well, he, he took yeah, the McEnroe I, I, on grass. I, I, take Borg, I take Borg as a baseline player who, on clay and grass, um, tend to be a little slower surfaces than hard crew or hard court, which is where the U.S. Opens played and the Australian Opens played. And well, I think with grass, the, I don't think it's necessarily slower yeah, than a concrete. Slower, but which you, yeah. you may not get a great bounce. So Bounce, if you're going to be aggressive right. and yeah. come at it, you, you may get a short hop that's not what you think it is. Uh-huh. Or if you stay back and just stroke the ball, then you're all right. So, yeah. But the thing is this. Borg yeah. was a badass because he still got the multiple U.S. Open finals, too, though. Right. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I don't know. I, and, and so would you say Borg's problem was longevity? He didn't last as long as, like, Nadal or Federer. Yeah, but if you remember this, Steve, back in the day – I mean, Jimmy Connors was considered old at 32. I mean, most of these right. guys, right. outside of, like, the Stan Smiths and the Arthur Ashes, most of these guys' Play career was like they'd turn pro at 15 or 16, and by the time mm-hmm. they're 30 years old, they're irrelevant anymore. Um, there weren't too many people that had a lot of longevity back then, but I think you see the same thing. I mean, in the NFL – yeah. You didn't see near as many 40-year-olds as you do now. And if you, if you did, they were like George Blandon. They were a kicker. I, I think nutrition is so much better than it used to be. Um, steroids mm-hmm. and performance enhancing <laughs> are much better. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is this. They know no, how to you're, use right, them now. you're right. You're right. They know right. how to use them now without damaging their bodies. Plus, there's a different PED for almost any problem you have now instead of just getting bigger. I mean, they can do all kinds of things with that. But I, I think that it is kind of a sports evolution where the training outside of your sport is much better than it used to be. But I will make this I, – I think training inside the sports may not be as good as it used to be, though. I think a lot of your great coaches like basketball, the wow. Pete Newells, the Hank Ibers, the Bobby Knights, the John Woodens, I don't think there's coaches yeah. like that the anymore. Fundamentals. You're in so you're college, talking fundamentals, right? Yeah, in college, the key is this. You're John yeah. Calipari. You just find five freaking studs. You throw them out there, and you hope you win. But the thing is this. The thing that shows that the old way was better is that almost every year when you watch the national champion get crowned, it's usually not mm-hmm. those schools. It's the schools that are like Villanova, that the players are there for at least three years. Fundamentals. Usually. Who won the national championship this year, Steve? Uh, Virginia. Virginia. And all their guys, you'll have the one guy that leaves early. But for the most part, all four teams in the NCAA Final right. Four were teams that had predominantly three- and four-year players. And those Agreed. are guys yeah. that are coached by coaches like the John Beelines of the world. John Beeline, mm-hmm. I wouldn't write him off at Cleveland just because I think the guy is a great coach. So he can make average talent a playoff team. He may not be able to win at all with them, but he can coach. And I think a lot of times anymore, instead of being a coach, it's more important, or guys think it's more important to be a great recruiter and just go out and get five studs, roll the ball out, let them play. But the problem is when you play a team coached by a Jay Wright or a John Beeline, they're going to have guys that may be a level below you, but they're going to play as a team a level above what you can play. Mm-hmm. Which was born was with Bjorn Borg. He just he, his fundamentals were so solid that he yeah he, B- he Borg just, just didn't make down. mistakes. So, they didn't make mistakes. So you as a and I know that you you go out this afternoon and you've got four or five kids you're working with on quarterbacks and you're a quarterback coach uh, individual. What's the first thing you talk about? Is it fundamentals? No attitude. First time no? we get a quarterback, attitude. what I'll do Which is, is the this. fundamentals. I'll have no. It's, it's, it's not the fundamentals. 
D- this is this is what okay. I'm talking about. When you All see right. a great quarterback, if you're playing high school football, if I'm coaching a high school team and the team we're playing shows up and they get off the bus, nobody's got a jersey on or anything, and they walk on the field just to check the field out, I can point out their best player right away usually if they've got a stud because it's the way he carries himself. So if I get a quarterback and the first time I work with him, I'll see if they can throw the ball a little bit, but I'm going to look what happens when the ball is not thrown well and see their body language. If the body language is bad, I stop it right there, and I explain to them that is the most important thing because as a quarterback, as a leader, you can never show distress. You, you have to be completely confident in yourself because if you're not, the people around you won't be completely confident in you. So to and, me, and okay, now that's a great that's yeah. a great point. Is that not a thing you would talk about, Bjorn Borg? Did Borg ever show emotion on the tennis court? Did he this ever is the show thing. emotion? I, I'm not talking about not showing emotion because I okay. mean, there's guys that are stress. emotional well, that are great like that. The emotion. thing is this: never show negative emotion. But the thing about Borg is this: when you watched Borg at the U.S. Open and you compared it to what Borg looked like on clay or on grass, Borg did mm-hmm. not have the same demeanor when he was playing in New York City against John McEnroe on a hard court as what he did, because you would see frustration creep in. On the other, he was supremely confident. But once that frustration creeped in, a guy like McEnroe, who was highly volatile uh, highly volatile and very aggressive, mm-hmm. once you let somebody Connors. be really aggressive see that you have a weakness there, those aggressive after. people will attack that. I mean, if I'm yeah. coaching a team, and I see the other team's quarterback throwing a fit or yelling at guys around him, the first thing I do is grab my guys and tell them, look at him, we've got them by the balls. And then we're going to go after point. him. That, that is so good. That is so good. Let me ask you one final question. I know you got Bobby coming on here. you gotta, you got to go make the website Plus I got money. a pee, but go ahead. you got to pee. But, so would you say last night that the owner of the Golden State Warriors was just a little aggressive – no, he wasn't aggressive. He was basically being an <laughs> asshole, sore loser. Asshole. You know, sore if, loser. if yeah, this is the thing, he only did that because they were getting their ass kicked. If they were winning by 30, uh-huh. he'd have probably patted, as you, as you would so fondly put it, patted he would have patted Kyle Lowry on the ass and say, yeah, hey, exactly, you'll be all yeah. right. You'll get us next game. But instead, he's getting That's embarrassed, so he shoved him. Embarrassed, yeah. And yeah. this is the thing. People that can't control themselves, I right. mean – you got to have people around that can control it. And I think this, the Agreed. great thing is they were controlled by the rest of the NBA and the rest of the Golden State Warrior owners who didn't wait 24 hours. They all came out immediately and said, mm-hmm. we do not condone this. This guy needs to be punished. So that was the good mm-hmm. thing there. I don't hold this against the yeah. Warriors organization because there's assholes no. in every group. Some assholes are rich. Some assholes are poor. But – if you're an asshole, you're an asshole either way. So we just need to get all assholes out of the way and go from, so from there. So, Mike, I got a question for you. Am I an asshole? Yes, you're an asshole, and it's about time for me to get you out of the way <laughs> so I can get Bobby in, in, too. Bobby's an asshole, too, but he's not as big an asshole as Steve most of the time. Oh, and Lucas God. is a Canadian asshole, which is an entirely different kind of asshole. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Sam McGinnis, I know you're listening. Be ready Monday so you can come on and we can talk about the St. Louis Blues winning it all. So we're going to wrap it up, and also we'll see if we get Cole on to talk a little NBA. Lucas, if you want to be on, or Lucas, you can wait till Tuesday when you can come on and talk about the world champion Toronto Raptors. Remember, check out BetDSI with the promo code TGT to get a 100% cash back bonus. You can hear me and Bobby Sheridan at the bottom of the hour at 2.30 Eastern Time with the Sheridan Report, where we'll give you a little heads up on the NBA Finals game tonight. And also give you the top picks in Major League Baseball for Friday night. So, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Remember, you can hear all our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts. You'll find the grueling truth. So, for Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to the grueling truth, where the legends speak.